Yeah, so everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Annalise. I am an enrollment advisor here at Steffel Institute. Um, I am generally on the phones, on the live chats, etc. So I get to speak to a lot of you who are possibly interested in our internship programs or just our courses or course first and then going for an internship program. So this um, today we actually have a very full packed uh, program for you guys. So we have four interns all together today that will be sharing their stories about their internship programs, which they're on with us. Um, at the moment, we are just waiting for one girl. She will be a little bit later. She will be speaking about South Korea at the end, but today we'll be speaking to Shannon. Shannon is currently in Vietnam. Um, she has also taught in South Korea before, so she'll be, I'll be speaking to her about Vietnam. So, and then we are moving to Kate, who is currently in Japan. So she is also very excited to give us all her stories about that. Um, next, next is Ashley Rose. You might've actually seen her already as well. She's quite active on, like she sends us loads of updates about her time in Thailand. So you might've seen her on our social medias, um, but she is here with us again as well to tell us a little bit more in person about her program. Um, and then lastly is Katie for South Korea further in depth. And obviously we have a little bit of background from Shannon that we can get as well. Um, so first things first, um, Asian, Asian internship programs. So we have a few of them listed on our websites, which are obviously very popular ones, which is why we have so many lovely people that are on them and why we can get a lot of feedback on it as well. So what is the favorite thing for me about Asian internships is obviously the landscapes. There are so many, there's either sun and beach or there is mountains, forests, all that good stuff. Um, obviously the cultural differences personally excite me as well, just to see how different it can be. Um, work ethics wise those kind of things and then obviously the food um i personally would be a sucker for asian cuisine so um with the prices that they are, are offering it absolutely fantastic and um, so as i said we have a very full schedule so i am going to not waste any time and move over to shannon so shannon like i said is on the vietnam program at the moment so this is a 12 month 12 month program um where the current salary would be between 1,000 to 65 euros to 1,600 euros um, per month. There is TEFL training included in the package that she booked on. There was an orientation, so I'd love to hear a little bit about that. You, you were meant to get Vietnamese lessons as well, so I'd love to know how well that is going for you as well. Um, so the requirements for this program is you are to be between 20 to 50 years of age. So this is one of the programs that is a lot more flexible when it comes to applicants that are a little bit more adult, um, which is absolutely great to have as an option. They do require you to be a native speaker or at least have a high level of a C1 up English. Um, you have to have a passport from Ireland, UK, USA, Canada, South Africa, Australia or New Zealand. Um, a bachelor's degree is also a must and you need to be healthy and have a clean criminal record. So this is just for anyone that would be interested. To keep that in mind um, and for Shannon then I would love to know why you chose to do this experience with us. Sure so um, back during COVID I was working in the travel industry so obviously you know things got disrupted and I had always wanted to be a teacher and I kind of felt okay this is the time I can do it anywhere in the world so I did a TEFL with TEFL Institute of Ireland I did the 180 hour level five certificate TEFL and decided to go to South Korea for a year. And I absolutely loved it. I just, I loved every moment of it. And I was really considering staying on in South Korea longer than the year, but I kind of want to live in as many different countries as I can. So I decided it's time to move and try somewhere else. I can always go back to Korea if I want to. So uh, myself and my husband, he came with me and we both decided to come to Vietnam. And uh, we we went back home to Ireland for a month and then came over to Vietnam in November of last year. And we are absolutely loving it. So we're here teaching at a language center. So you have two options in Vietnam. You can teach at a public school or a language center. And we decided on the language center simply for the hours. Um, our current full-time schedule is 21 hours a week, teaching hours. 
Uh, that does not include lesson planning, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. Our center has a lot of resources for us, so we don't have to lesson plan too extensively. And we're right in Ho Chi Minh City. We have an amazing apartment that we had to get, uh, not included, where in Korea, your apartment is included. Vietnam, it is not. Um, and yeah, we're both teaching at the same center. We work nights and weekends. And we teach children ages three to like 15. Very good, very good. And how did you find the first few months there? Did you obviously you had your experience with working in South Korea? So you might have kind of had an idea how you were, what you were getting yourself into as such. But was there anything specific that stood out in your experience of starting there? Well, we were, we did the orientation and I am so glad that we did because we didn't get one in Korea. We were kind of just thrown into it because of COVID. We couldn't gather, so we couldn't do an orientation. And we thought, you know, we've done a year in Korea. We know everything. We know Asia. No, 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 no. The countries are so different. So we decided to do the orientation and it was an amazing week. It was so valuable. It was five days um, from about 8 a.m. to like 4 p.m. of just history of Vietnam, culture, language lessons, excursions, and we're still very close friends with some of the people in our orientation as well, which helped a lot. And it it really prepared us because Vietnam was a big culture shock. Um, like, it you know, it, it's an interesting country in that it's on its way into developing into a first world nation, but it's not there yet. And I had never been anywhere that wasn't first world. So just getting used to the traffic and the smells and the sounds and the construction and, and it, the chaos, um, it really helped having that orientation and having the support of TEFL when we were going through the documents and the process of booking and the interviews and just knowing that we had the support system there was so valuable. And we've leaned on TEFL a lot and we appreciate you guys so much because <laughs> It's very scary to move across the world and you have a different language and a different culture. And, you know, as a teacher, your job, it's not isolating in any way, but you're working with kids all day, not adults. And so you can kind of feel disconnected. So it's really amazing to have support from the TEFL Institute of Ireland and the partners. Very good. I'm glad to hear that. So would you say your advice is kind of to keep asking those questions or do you have any other specific advice for any new teachers? Um, I would lean on your center, lean on the, the, or do the orientation week, hundred percent. It helped so much. They even did lesson planning activities. We taught at a charity school. So you kind of got a taste of teaching before you were stepping foot into a classroom and feel free to re always reach out. There's a big network of teachers here. There's, you know, TEFL, you can reach out to the partners are amazing. They're in Vietnam and Korea and Thailand, everywhere that you need. Um, there's a lot of support around you. So don't feel like if you don't know what you're doing, you have to just figure it out. You can ask a ton of people who are more than happy to help you. Yeah, very good. Very good. And um, especially exactly like, don't be afraid to ask those questions. You're not alone, I suppose. It's a very good point to take out of that. Um, and what would be your most enjoyable thing about teaching English? Have you kind of, and would there be a difference between the South Korea and Vietnam program for you? Yeah, so I love teaching English. I love teaching children. It is so much fun and you can be silly and you can sing and dance and watching them learn and develop their language skills and go from barely being able to say hello to you to being able to tell you about things that they did on the weekend. is It's mm -hmm. just incredible and it's very rewarding. And oh, you, you really see as, like speaking with locals here, how important learning English is just for their own higher education, for their own job opportunities. So you do feel like you're making a difference as an English teacher. Um, and in terms of the classroom, I find Vietnam very different to South Korea. Mm -hmm. South Korea was very intense, very structured, a lot of book work. Um, they take studying very seriously. Where in Vietnam, the structure of the classes are longer, but it's a lot more playing, a lot more games and songs, a lot less book work and homework, and neither structure is better. They're just different. Very good. Very good. That's interesting to know as well, that, that, that little bit of difference between them. Um, so then I kind of want to lastly also ask you, what would you 
what do you love most about Vietnam and why would why or would you recommend this program to anyone else? What reasons would there be for it? So I love the work-life balance here. I mean, we we work from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And that's our that's our full work day. And so I have the whole day to kind of, you know, exercise or read or work on projects, but I'm still making a full-time salary. I'm still working full-time. And Vietnam has amazing food, really affordable fruit, like fresh smoothies and coconuts. And that was a hard thing in Korea. Fruit's very expensive. I don't know why, but it's so expensive. So Can't disagree with fruit. you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. A thing of strawberries was $15. Like, but in Vietnam, the fruit's very fresh, very local. And it's a very relaxed environment here. Like kind of, you know, nobody takes anything too seriously, which is very nice. Very good. That's lovely. Thank you so much for, for coming on today anyway and telling us a little bit about Vietnam. Um, guys, I actually forgot to mention that if there is any questions, by all means, you're more than welcome to put them in the question box here. And at the end, we'll have a little bit of a Q&A session. So if it's for a specific person, by all means, mention their name. Um, but we'll go through them then anyway at the end. Um, so next up, we are going to move to Kate, um, who is in the lovely Japan. She's only been there a little while. Um, but she is, as far as we know, absolutely loving it, but we'll find out more. So a little bit about the package that she booked on to. Um, so again, it's a 12 month program with us. Um, the salary ranges from 1,550 euros to 2,150 euros. There's again a cultural orientation included. Um, it's not exactly the same as Vietnam, but there is still an orientation. Um, TEFL training is included as we always do. Um, and accom accommodation assistance is in there as well. So the requirements for our Japan program is that you do need to be between the ages of 21 to 40. Um, you do need to be a native English speaker. If you are not, they do require you to have at least 12 years of English schooling. So that is or schooling in English, I should say. Um, you need to be a passport holder of one of the seven countries, the same as Vietnam. So Ireland, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, um the us and then obviously a bachelor's degree again is required and you need to be kind of flexible with this program when it comes to your preferences for location um and obviously of course again being healthy for both mentally and physically as well as a clean criminal record um so for kate as well kind of basically the similar question so basically how why and how did you get to join us on this program and how are you finding it um, hi everyone, um, so good to see so many people here. Um, so I basically joined uh, TEFL Ireland's internship um, after I finished university. Um, I graduated last year and like many people wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do next. Um, I wasn't really ready to go into sort of the big girl job world <laughs> So I, and I really wanted to travel. Um, so landing on a TEFL just seemed like the perfect option for me. And um, there's so much out there in terms of TEFL degrees and options that it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, but I really liked the TEFL Institute of Ireland's sort of hands on approach to helping you. Like they literally just give you a call at any time you want and can explain everything to you in like a really personalized way. So that just really sold it to me. And um, it just seemed like a much more personalized service. Um, and I also really, I was quite sad on going to Japan and I saw that they had a Japan specific um, internship. So I was like, this is just ideal. So I just signed up, like no questions asked. <laughs> and I was so glad I did because everything just worked out really, really well. And um, so the intern, the TEFL degree I did was the 120 hour one, which is completely remote. And um, you can do it in your own time, I think within six months. Um, and I also got to add on, um, smaller courses like they're both 30 hour ones um, for advanced grammar and teaching and learners which are both really really helpful and just have like really laid the groundwork for um, my teaching now so very yeah good. definitely couldn't recommend them more and um, it's been really good very good so and how did you find because obviously you're only there a little while you've been there about a month you said so um how are you finding your first month teaching in japan is it everything you expected and more or is it you didn't know what to expect where did you go from it 
Yeah, so like I felt like the whole run up to moving here, I was like following loads of pages on Instagram and like I'd seen so many like TikToks about like what to expect in Japan. And while some of it is real, some like it just has exceeded so much expectations. Like Japan is just the most incredible clash of everything. Like there is like I live quite close to Tokyo, so that is just like mind-bogglingly incredibly big and amazing and there's so much to it like if you aren't a big city person there's parts of it that feel like you're in a town and they feel quite like you know local which is really nice and then there's also like the amazing areas like Shibuya and Shinjuku and everything and so yeah Japan is just incredible like there's something for everyone like in about 40 minutes from here I can be at like a surfing area with like loads of beaches and Mount Fuji is quite close by so it's just amazing and in terms of teaching I only started in the last uh, two weeks so I'm still very much settling in but um, the school is really lovely I'm teaching in a public school um, which I've personally heard is the best option and um, they're kind of more reliable and the hours tend to be a bit more fair and um, so my hours are really nice and um, there's nothing to do with like I haven't felt the whole Japan work culture really at all here and um, I work from half eight to 20 past three and I get an hour's break and um, there's that also includes lesson planning time with and I have about three classes every day which are about 50 minutes long and I work as an assistant language teacher so I'm with a Japanese English teacher so I'm really supported in that way, like I'm not in any way out of my own, which works for me because I'm a first time um, TEFL teacher. Um, so yeah, I'm loving the work so far. The students are really fun. They're a lot more kind of um, energetic and enthusiastic than I expected. I thought they'd be a bit more kind of subdued and very like respectful, <laughs> which they are, but uh, they are really fun as well, which is good, good crack. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I suppose they're kind of as curious about you as you were about them in a way, is it? Absolutely. They're just baffled. They didn't even know what Ireland was. When I, they were like, what's that? And then they thought Europe was America. And so <laughs> so it's, okay. it's really nice feeling like you're actually broadening their horizons. And um, as an ALT, like nearly 50% of your work is to be like a cultural ambassador and to help to broaden their horizons because a lot of young Japanese people have never left Japan and don't really see much beyond their own kind of prefecture and area so it's really nice to kind of expose them to things that are outside of their own um, kind of world yeah absolutely that's very good and um, so then to kind of move on so what like and kind of building on that so is what would be your favorite about teaching there like is it is it the is it the curiosity of your students or is there something else that would really stand out to you um yeah the curiosity of the students is certainly a highlight but um also just the staff I work with like the level of English in Japan is quite low and um, but they really doesn't stop the other um, teachers from trying to communicate with me they're just so kind I just like come into work and they leave me little like presents on my desk and they're always just like you can see them Google translating what they want to say to me and then they come over and they're like Keito sensei <laughs> so they're just really lovely and make such an effort to be kind and inclusive and um, despite the language barrier so that's been really nice and um, yeah everything's just really lovely the schools are brilliant here they have such amazing resources they take their like sports and everything so seriously the sports day is like a national holiday which is crazy here and so if you're into any like activities like that it's certainly uh, a good place to, to come to yeah fantastic fantastic and um, so obviously you kind of already touched on what your average day would look like 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 your hours of working and stuff and is there anything out of the ordinary that you'd say like oh that you mightn't expect that into your day-to-day -day, or is it all very straightforward you just have your Monday to Friday pretty straightforward um I they give you your yearly schedule like at the beginning so I know like already my holidays and stuff which I was really pleasantly surprised with I have about I think over a month off for summer and then like two weeks off at Christmas and Christmas here is international holiday so I was kind of anticipating having to work for it but um the company I'm with have very kindly given it to me as a holiday so definitely there's a lot of a lot more free time than I expected which is really nice because there's just so much to do here and yeah it's really the finishing hour is really nice as well because you actually have a whole evening to yourself and um, like finishing at 20 past three 
means you can basically go into, I can go into Tokyo and enjoy my evening there, or I can go, I don't know, read my book in a park or make a nice dinner, meet friends or whatever. Um, and you feel like you have a social life as well as a working life. Fantastic. Very good. Um, so out of everything, because obviously you have so, said so many lovely things already about your program, is there anything that would be your absolute favourite, your absolute favourite thing about the whole program and obviously the reason why someone else should do it as well? Um, it's basically just like a really supported way of moving abroad and traveling and um, because I, I wouldn't really have known where to start otherwise. Like I've heard of there being like job forums and stuff like that, but um, I'd say there's just so much there that it's hard to find direction. And um, so I really enjoyed the support both from TEFL and the partners. And um, they also, we had a, like a training week as well at the start. So I felt very equipped going into the classroom. I didn't feel like I hadn't a clue what I was doing. Um, and I was also able to make friends through that, which is really nice. And um, because I came here on my own and I don't really know anyone in Japan. <laughs> and yeah, and also encouraging to, um, to take up Japanese classes, which I've done. And yeah, there's just so much to do here. And um, they even have a Japanese GA team which is a lovely way to meet Irish people. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't I didn't realise it existed either. But uh, yeah, everything is just brilliant. So I couldn't recommend it more. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that as well, Kate. And um, like I said, we are refreshing for time. So we're on, on schedule still, which is great. But we want to have some time for the questions at the end. Um, so we are next up going to move to Ashley Rose. And then lastly, Katie has joined us, obviously, since which you may have noticed she'll be speaking about South Korea in more detail at the end. Um, so Ashley Rose is on our four and a half month in Thailand program. Um, so she, this program is like a, a four and a half month program that we run kind of every year. So it is a recurring one as well. Very popular. Um, the average salary on this program, you'd generally be looking around 780 euros to 885. Um, we again have the TEFL, TEFL um, training included in the program as well. Um, there is a three day welcome orientation in Bangkok before you actually go off to the location where you'll be teaching. Um, accommodation assistance again is included. And there is an option to extend your program uh, or your contract as well, which is always great as well to have. For this particular program, the age restriction is between 21 years of age to 45 years of age. Um, a native English speaker um, is a requirement as well as the passport holder is staying as the other program. So all UK, Ireland, USA, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, etc. Um, now with this, we do sometimes accept European passports as well, but we just ask you to get in touch with one of our advisors if this is the case, because they'll be able to either me or my colleagues will be able to explain to you what exactly the proceedings are with that. Um, then a bachelor's degree again is required as well as the academic results um, and again being healthy and having no criminal record. So Ashley Rose obviously I kind of said actually at the start that people may have seen you obviously on social media as you are very very good for sending us pictures with all your lovely adventures um, but yeah you are I believe you're after completing the, the program is that right? Yeah, I just Perfect. finished um, end of February there. So I'm actually currently in the Philippines now. That's uh, and I chose this backdrop just to kind of suit the vibe because <laughs> that's honestly what the Philippines looks like. But yeah, um, yeah, I oh, geez, it's 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 lovely being back here. Thank you for having me. Um, and I can't believe I'm a month finished. Like I, I honestly feels like yesterday when I was when I landed in Bangkok with my boyfriend and we started the orientation. And like, I remember we were both so nervous because I, I, I was nervous and actually starting a new job. And then Sean has never taught before, never, never set foot inside a classroom and since he was there himself studying. Um, so we were both nervous, but um, we, we met loads of people at the orientation in a similar position to us um, that never traveled before, um, never done teaching. Um, and yeah, we all just kind of got to know each other, made friends, exchanged numbers and supported each other then throughout the six months or sorry, the four and a half months that we were there. Um, and yeah, so like I said, I, I, I landed in with my boyfriend. He was teaching maths through English and I was teaching English. We were um, 
we were based in a government primary school in a city called Udon Thani. So that's basically, it's on the border of Lao there um, in the Isan region. So you'll get it. We, we found we, a lot of our, our teacher teaching friends were based in the Isan region because it was a lot more rural and there's not as much English spoken in those areas. So I suppose for any of you thinking, oh, it's going to be Bangkok and it might be more glam, like you are put in, in rural areas, you know, for the purpose of... Um, of helping um, those communities build their English, but they're absolutely beautiful and I wouldn't change the area for the world. We had an absolute ball. Um, our city was small, but the people were just incredible. Um, they were so friendly, welcoming, um, very generous with, you know, their 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 food, their recommendations. Um, they're even inviting us along to different parties. They were just amazing. Um, the teachers were very good to us when we were settling in. You know, there was no big expectation. The main thing was that we were to be in the classroom as much as we can and just to have fun, which was like a big whirlwind for me because I'm a teacher back home. And like, you know, back home, it's very structured in Ireland and it's very paperwork driven and everything has to be documented and everything is very formal. But what I found about Thailand was I never like I there wasn't one day in that classroom where I didn't laugh, you know, with the kids. Um, and you, you just come down to their level, like like Shannon said, it's it's very you, you do a lot of games. It's you know, it's all about like the sillier you are, the, the more you make mistakes, the more the kids love it. You know, they're they're more like your friends than your students, which is just such a lovely experience for me. Um, and yeah, I had a bit of competition too with Sean because the girls, the the, the 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 little primary school girls, took a shine to him. I think his bag was full of love letters and notes and hearts before we left, oh, which was classic. just amazing. Yeah, so I'm hopping from different things there, but I hope you're getting the gist of 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 life there. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And what was like when what was life like that on your day to day where you what were your hours kind of like and stuff on the program? So so yeah, so we started school. School ran from seven thirty in the morning to three thirty. But you didn't actually start teaching till eight thirty because in Thailand there that that hour in the morning is dedicated to a, a morning assembly, um, morning talk, um, and also like gate duty where like you might be on you might be asked to stand at the gate and greet students and their families um before they enter school. And like that it's you might do one day a week from 7 30 to 8 30 after go duty then you you go to your morning assembly they stand for the national anthem as well it's just it's a lovely kind of you think it's boring and it's oh it's a drag every day but for for us we found it god it's so lovely to just slow down and actually like take this in in the morning before starting your school day um so then the day started at 8 30 and you might have three or four lessons a day some days i had Free. So I'd have two in the morning and then one after lunch. Uh, and we got an hour for lunch as well, same as Kate. Um, so that was really nice. Um, you could leave the school, you could go for a coffee or you could go across the road to just street food. Um, and there was so much selection and so many gorgeous fruit stalls as well. Oh, my God. If I could bring my little fruit lady home with me, I would. I just I think I fueled her business for the forum once I was there. Um, so school finished then at 3.30 in the evening was your own. You had so much time. Like I joined a gym um, and I made so many friends there. So you could go to the gym. There was a mall in our little city. Uh, we were living right beside a beautiful park that had like a lovely lake in the middle. You could go rowing on or you could get a massage for like four euro um, and like more and more street food there. So there was just so much to do. And then other days you just want to chill out, you know, and if you had certain lessons that you were excited for, I always find if I'm excited for a class, I'll, I'll do a little bit of prep the night before just so I'm ready to go. Um, but like the girl said, like there was very little lesson planning to be done outside of school, like because we had windows in between classes to lesson plan. So it was perfect. I was actually given out to my boyfriend because he was the whole time on his phone bloody looking at like, funny videos and I was like oh my god come on you need to plan <laughs> but he was just so easy going about it it wasn't you know it wasn't hard to plan it was easy you were you were following a curriculum that was provided to you we had books for maths English science we had cds to accompany it um and then I just ran off the topics there so you know you might have a topic on food or you might have one on travel family 
Um, and yeah, there was just so much, there's like, there's so much to do with those topics, you know, when you scour the internet and then when you bounce ideas off each other um, and, and even the friends you've made at orientation, like you exchange contacts and you're like, guys, did anybody do, you know, a quiz on clothing or something like that? Can you give me any games? It's very, the planning is very straightforward. Once you get into it, give yourself the first two weeks just to get a feel for it. And then it just, it just flows very naturally. Look, very good, very good. Mm. And what would you say was the most enjoyable part about the teaching there at Thailand? Was there like, was it was obviously not your first experience teaching, but obviously there would be a big difference between. So, was there anything that stood out? Um, oh, it has to be back to the kids again. Like, like every time that we'd finish our lessons and they come down to the office and they come in for a chat, and they were just so funny. I'd have like Kate said there, I'd have little love notes and cookies or muffins on my table. A big thing was they're big on celebrations. So like Loy Krathong was a big celebration in November where they, it's kind of like a very ceremonial um, celebration in Thailand where they send little, uh, what is it, Krathongs, which is floating vessels made out of banana leaves and flowers. And there was just, the, the whole communities gathered together and that was celebrated in school as well. Um, and yeah, they just like all lessons are cancelled and everybody is just involved in this ceremony, you know, no more than Christmas, like Christmas ran for a full week. We were dressed up in Santa outfits. Uh, I never seen so many Santa outfits in my whole life, especially in like a Buddhist country. It was hilarious. Um, but uh, that was great. And it's 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 those ceremonies. Another one was sports day as well. Sports day ran for a week and it started with a big parade at the start of the week and it ended with a finishing ceremony. And it's like your, your lessons are cancelled, but you're just playing with the children. Like you're just talking to them. You're having lunch with them. You're dancing with them, playing sports. It's amazing. Like it's it's nothing like I've ever seen before. And it was a really good experience like that because it's not like that in Ireland. Like it's very much the teachers are in their staff room and the kids are in their classroom or whatever around the yard. And the play is not there. You know, it's uh, the conversation, the, the general conversation, the, you know, the fun conversation is not there. Um, so definitely that was my favorite part, just getting involved in whatever celebrations they had to offer and uh, yeah, and having fun with the kids. That's amazing. That's very good. Mm. Um, and I obviously want to give you one last question before we do move on to our lovely Katie for South Korea, just because, like I said, it's a very bumpful um, program. So what would you recommend this pro our program to anyone else and why, basically? Yeah, I would definitely recommend um, the internship in Thailand, um, firstly, because it's only four months long. So it's a great uh, it's it's a great window. You can do anything for four months. That's the way we looked at it. Um, so if you like it, you can extend um, and you actually get a bonus. If you extend, you get a bonus of 10,000 baht if you do do the extension. Um, but if you don't, you can move on, you know, so it's it's great. And then like that, Thailand is is even more beautiful in person than it is on uh, when you look at the pictures. And I'm like you, Anne Lise, I'm a big foodie. The cuisine in Thailand is just like, it's not like a green and red Thai curry. Like it's way more varied and, you know, um, exotic. Um, so, and then the weather, like it's lovely to be able to live in a hot climate, you know? So you've got the weather on your side and to back up again, what Shannon said, you've got the work-life balance. Like it's just lovely hours. Your weekends are your own. Um, and you've just, there's so many incredible places to visit on your weekends. You can even get a train to the next neighboring city. Even if it's a six hour bus ride, you do it because the locals do it. It's the norm. It's not like, oh my God, I couldn't like, you know, if we say going from like Athlone to Cork is four and a half hours back home, it's, it's a drag. But in Thailand, you do a six hour bus journey to get to that beautiful village on the other side, you know? So, um, yeah, I'd recommend it so much. And even if you're going on your own, do it because there's so many people in the same boat as you and you're going to meet so many friends. You know, it's it's even if you don't meet English speaking friends that I have my I still have a WhatsApp group with my Thai gym friends. Um, I was laughing with Sean. My going away party in Thailand was bigger than my going away party in Ireland. Like it was no joke. I couldn't believe it. Like my heart was just so full after it all. Um, so, so definitely just if you're nervous about it, go for it. It's the best experience you'll ever do. That's amazing. Thank you for so sure. much for, for that, yeah. actually, Rose. And obviously we love seeing all your content because I believe the banana boats that you were talking about earlier, the banana leaf boats, they were, they were uploaded at some point, I think as well, when that was yeah, happening. So yeah. absolutely. 
Um, we've been loving living your your life through your Instagram, really, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so, okay, next up. Yeah. So last but definitely not least, we're moving on to our lovely Katie, who has also been on a webinar with us before. Um, so she is in South Korea, so she was only first there the first time she was on a webinar with us, but she definitely surely has some more experience now and some more stories to tell to us. Um, so this program, again, is a 12 month program as well. So this salary generally ranges from 1500 euros to 1730 euros per month. Um, there was a culture course included as well. Once once someone signed, once you signed up to the program, um, there was a one week orientation and on arrival and to continuous professional development orienta or orientations in the year as well. Um, you can either teach in a public or a private school. There's a one way flight reimbursement and an end of contract bonus, which is if, which would be equivalent to a month salary. There's a rent free accommodation, as Shannon kind of touched on at the start. There's no cost on that. Um, there is a, an option to renew your contract as well. And the school would cover 50 percent of your medical insurance as well. So for this program, um, our partners would like the applicants between be within 21 and 35 years of age. They have to be a native or fluent English speaker um, with a high level of English if they are only fluent. Um, have to have a passport from Ireland, UK, USA, Canada, South Africa, Australia, or New Zealand as the other ones. Um, a bachelor's degree would need to be from one of the seven countries mentioned. Um, then a criminal background would need to be done as well on all countries lived on ever. Basically, a clean bill of health, mental and physical health, and you have to be obviously available for the minimum of the one year. Um, I do see a few questions, and I know that some of them might be related to this, but I do feel like we can get back to them just after Katie has told us all about her experience. So, Katie, how uh, is your experience going now since we last spoke? I know it's been a year since yeah. I was done last year. Yeah, because so it's April now. I came in February of last year, 12th of February last year, I left Ireland. Uh, Crazy. <laughs> back to 14 months of my life yes um now as you heard I came in February of last year which meant I came full COVID lockdowns restrictions it was like coming through an apocalypse movie in in Chan airport <laughs> I stepped off the airplane in in Chan at half past three on the Sunday afternoon I got to my apartment 14 hours later three hours away by car normally it took me 14 hours through quarantine so if that trip alone wasn't keeping me here the food and everything else did um i suppose a little bit about myself i actually trained to be a i'm a i'm a classically trained chef from cit um i did that when i left school i went to university to become a chef i have a culinary business degree i was an interior designer for another four years i'm a teacher <laughs> as you can tell i just they didn't know what i wanted to do um but no i kind of came across chefville ireland I have this, I have always lived by the motto that what is for you doesn't pass you. That's kind of always been something I've stuck with my whole life. Um, I actually wanted to be a music teacher when I was in school, but a very ill-timed um, injury to my right-hand side when I was in fifth year meant that I lost function on the right-hand side of my body. I can't play the piano anymore. And unfortunately, you need piano to be a music teacher in Ireland. So I was kind of at a loss as to what to do. Chefing became something I did because of my dad. And then that led me to doing the business degree and so on and so forth um but being a wanting to be a music teacher I was obsessed with all kinds of music I heard a k-pop song one day that got me interested in listening to other k-pop songs on the internet saw a video about a girl teaching in Korea which then led me to looking into it started looking at TEFL courses realized that a lot of the prices were coming up in England in pounds decided ah, TEFL that you will give me my original on the website first thing that popped up on the screen was the South Korea internship I was like well if that's not a sign <laughs> now is the time to move so um yeah I turned 30 last year in November and that was like my big kicking point was the fact that like you're about to turn 30 do something <laughs> um and do something you want to do like I think COVID kind of showed a lot of us that we weren't happy with what we were doing we were kind of just getting through things and just kind of settling into what we were like you know what it was but uh no definitely wanting to be a teacher has always been something of have it was my calling, I think, and then it just got away from me for a little while, about a minute now. I'm going nowhere. I've, like I said, I've been here 14 months. I have zero plans on coming back to Ireland at all, not even relatively soon, just at all. <laughs> I'm going nowhere. I'm staying in Korea forever. Very good. And are you teaching now in a 
private school or a public school just for no, so i i teach headline which is yeah. private private school but i teach um private school evening so basically my working day starts at 2 p.m. and I finish at 10 p.m. Hence why I was a touch late because I literally finished work like 40 minutes That's ago. <laughs> absolutely fine. We just very much appreciate you joining us and to be able to tell us a little bit about it, obviously. Um, so obviously, like you said, you're, you're working nights. So what would your normal day to day or your week kind of look like when you're teaching there? From work Monday to Friday. Uh, like I said, I started at 2 p.m. I finish at 10 p.m. Um, and I know that for a lot of people that might not be the biggest draw to things that you can teach, um, as Anthony was saying, that there is, and what was I public or private? If you teach public, you're guaranteed to be teaching in the morning. If you teach private, you have the option of private morning or private evening. Um, I just happen to teach private evening. So like I said, I start, I'm usually, uh, I usually get to work for 10 to 10 to two. I actually live at one minute, 15 second walk from my Hagwan. So it actually doesn't take me any time to get there. Sure. Um, so yeah, I get there for 10 to 2. Um, I teach on average uh, four classes a day. Some days I have five classes, some days I have three classes. It just kind of depends. Uh, and I teach um, uh, elementary grades four, five, six, and middle school one, two, and three. Very good, very good. Um, so obviously now you're there for 14 months now you said so obviously you did you, you extend it I suppose with the same school or did you move to a different school when you did? oh no absolutely the same school my I landed absolute gold mm. at the school that I came here with uh, that I came to like I said I turned 30 last year and they I had about a two-week celebration of my birthday it was ridiculous um between like two dinners my director's birthday was two weeks before mine uh, so the week in between ours we had this massive Korean barbecue dinner where the boss paid for everybody um to go for dinner for both of us and then I walked into a surprise party on the day of my birthday <laughs> in the in school and then all the kids got me gifts my co-teachers got me gifts I think we went for another dinner the weekend after for the other for like just a private dinner <laughs> it went down for weeks but uh the students are amazing my co-teachers are phenomenal I honestly couldn't have have gotten a nicer group of people location school everything it's been the best decision of my life coming here amazing amazing and like obviously now you're a little bit further down the line but do you remember what it was like when you first came over like what's what was the first few months like for you um so the company that I signed for I kind of took a risk because um in Korea, if you choose to work through the public school system, you get zero to no preference. And you can preference your location, but you don't get any like full 100 percent like pick of where you live. If you go through the public school system with the private system, you kind of you can you can preference your area. Um, and when I got two job offers, I got one for uh, Chunchan, which is just outside of Seoul. And I got one for Busan and I didn't even blink. I was like, Busan, that's the only one I went, Busan. I don't care. I don't care what time the offers are. Two in the morning, it's fine. I want to go to Busan. Um, but uh, so, like I said, I wanted to come to Busan. That was the, the biggest draw for me, I suppose, more than, more than anything. Um, Staying with the same school wasn't a no-brainer. Location was a no-brainer. The work itself is fine. Um, and like for me personally, it's totally fine. Like my particular school does want lesson planning. I knew that when I started, there wasn't any, there wasn't any hidden fees or figures in that or anything. Like I was told that but because I had always wanted to be a teacher, I took it as a kind of a challenge. Very so good. I was like, yeah, look, let's see what it's like. It's fine. But when I started here last year, I actually was the only English teacher at an academy that had been open for three weeks. Oh, wow. And okay. I was the only English teacher there until July of last year. So okay. when I got here, it was very much a case of we were all learning together, <laughs> um, figuring out what we were doing, what way the lessons would go. Like we are part of a franchise that was in Seoul. And it's quite a, it's quite big in Seoul. It's one of the, it's one of the biggest ones in Seoul. Um, but we're one of their out of Seoul 10 locational franchises uh, as part of it. So we had a basis of what to do and it was kind of up to us then to implement it. But because I was there at the beginning, I suppose I was able to lay a few like ground groundings in the way I wanted to do certain things. And then nobody really questioned me on it because there was nobody else doing it. So it was great. 
Very good, very good. Um, so obviously I am very vigilant now on the time. So I just want to ask you the last question that I've asked everyone mm -hmm. as well. Like, what did you love most about living? What do you love most about living in South Korea? And would you per also recommend this program for other curious, yeah. curious teachers, I suppose? Yeah, like I said, with the with Korea, you could you have to do a bit of research into the whole private and public system. There's a ton of things that are pros and cons for both. So it's up to you as a person what you want to do. Me personally, once I got into the reading of it, I knew I didn't want to do the ethic. I had really certain ideas of where I wanted to live and the type of schooling I wanted to be in. Uh, for me, I absolutely just I just love the culture here. I am, as I mentioned, I'm a classically trained chef. So like anything food related here is just joyful for me and um, but I've made so many phenomenal friends here um and just in general for me personally the way of life here where I live anyway is very chilled like I live in a predominantly Korean area like it's I do live in Busan and I actually live but I live in an area of Busan where people from Korea come on vacation so there's less English here than there would be in ordinary spots of Korea uh, but then again I, I just think the pace of life here is incredible. There's a beach like 10 minutes behind me. So like I can get up in the morning, go and do what I want or, or, or I can sleep in and just go to work. Suits me fine. Time difference with Ireland helps because we're eight hours ahead. So very good. No, honest to God, jump at it. I wouldn't. I It's the best decision I've ever made. Very good. I, and I appreciate your honesty as well about like, oh, do your research um, to see like, oh, what suits you as a person? Because I suppose that is something that's to consider for some people, I suppose. So I appreciate that very much. And thank you so much for telling about your experience with us as well. Um, so I am going to go through a few questions that have been put in the, the um, chat box basically and just for everyone involved as well obviously we do always recommend to get in touch if you are interested in our programs just to make sure that we can run through the requirements with each other and those kind of things um, but we are also given a an exclusive coupon code at the end of this webinar so if someone is interested obviously get in touch um, and I will call out the coupon code later on in the webinar as well so you can take 100 euros off the booking fees for anyone that wants to go um, on an adventure like our lovely interns have. Um, so the first question here I see is, would you recommend going online first or jump straight into travel? So I'd actually love to ask that to Shannon, who has traveled to two countries. Like, did you do anything online first or did you say travel first? Um, we personally just jumped into traveling first. Uh, we ended up having to do a bit online because of COVID, right? And I would say you're going to get way more experience. You're going to find your feet a lot faster when you're in it. So if you just jump into it, plus you get the perks of experiencing the culture of the place that you're in, where if you're online and you're teaching, you're kind of getting half of it. Like it's still a wonderful experience, but if you're going to do teaching English as a foreign language, you should go and experience the full experience of it. And um, it's it's a lot easier as well to build a relationship with your students when you're in person than when trying to do it online, especially when you're teaching the young ones. It's very hard to keep them interested in a computer screen. So um, I recommend jumping right in and doing an actual travel teaching experience, but it's it's all your own personal preference as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so I am moving on to Edmund there who asked about any advice about teaching in Asia without a degree? Obviously, the programs that we just spoke about today do require you to have a degree. We do have a different program. Unfortunately, we don't have a speaker for it today, but we have our Cambodia program. So if you are interested about in going to Asia um, on an internship program, we have our Cambodia program, which again is a 12 month program as well, where we don't require you to have a bachelor's degree. Do keep in mind the bachelor's degree is generally related to visa requirements. So it's not necessarily like the TEFL needs it, it's for you to actually get into the country as such. But if you're interested in it, again, feel free to get in touch with our head offices. Um, you can email us, call us, um, look on our website and there's a contact form there as well. And my colleague will be putting in our email addresses there as well for you to contact us whenever you want. Um, so then there is the next question about monthly allowances ranges for paid internship. 
power is determined. So this is actually something that is determined by our partners and it can vary depending on someone's um, previous experience or location where exactly you're placed. Because obviously some areas might be wealthier than other areas, those kind of things, but it generally goes hand in hand. Um, and then we have a lovely question for Ashley Rose, where it's as where the question is, is the salary in Thailand enough to live comfortable life on? Yeah, so great question. Um, it's definitely um, enough to live comfortably. It's actually probably enough to live a very glamorous life in my in my experience. Um, you know, you could, I, I think if you weren't kind of going and doing events every weekend, you could live on 50 euro a week easily. Um, in Thailand, cooking is not really a thing. It's they always go out for street food. If there's street food everywhere, you can get it as a takeaway or you can just sit and eat it there um, at the street markets. But um, the street food is very cheap. I at the start, I had my own cooker and I was doing a lot of cooking because I love cooking from home. But I found I was actually spending too much money buying stuff from the supermarket. Um, to cook myself it was just easier to go out um and like that the tefl and um your the partner in thailand they sort your accommodation for you and you get an accommodation allowance so it's three thousand baht per person um which i think oh does that work out maybe at least about 200 250 euro a month i'm not even too sure what that is a month yeah yeah thereabouts yeah so, I mean, that's your accommodation allowance. Um, because I was obviously traveling with my boyfriend, we had the option of looking for our own accommodation for a bit more space because we had two allowances coming in. So 6,000 baht between us, um, which meant we got um, uh, accommodation for 7,000 baht a month. So we only actually had to put 500 baht towards it each you know um so it was brilliant um and like that we were we were doing something every weekend like i was exhausted because there's so many cool things to do but we, we, we made a promise to each other that like we're traveling the world together we're you know we're making money as we're traveling and we're going to spend it and enjoy ourselves while we're there because why not you know what would we be you know we didn't really need to save it for anything in particular um we had an absolutely amazing glamorous new year's eve in bangkok in a fabulous rooftop bar um, um, and it was just great. I don't regret anything. I didn't actually, you could save, you could you could live a very kind of convenient life saving and just going to school, having the very like, cheap street food um, and having a, a really quiet few weekends. And that's absolutely fine. We did that the odd time. Um, and some of my friends did save money. Some of them are gone to India now and they're traveling. But as I said, we were just loving everything about Thailand. So we were spending money as we were making it. And it was really lovely. Yeah. Very good, very good. Thank you for that. Um, no so we are moving on then for the next question. It's just for someone that has all the qualifications or is meeting all the requirements as such. And would it be possible to get the client? It is generally a slim to none question, but it can, or a slim to slim to none chance that you don't get accepted. But again, if you're unsure or anything like that, this is also why we ask you to kind of reach out to us first, and we can kind of go through it and make sure that you would be. A good fit. Obviously, we've had a lot of people that we have placed successfully, so um, we kind of know what our partners are looking for. So just always get in touch, and we'll be able to help you out. Um, the next one, Yushi, we are actually in touch. I know that we are. So um, you are asking about your Indian nationality. So obviously, we have kind of been speaking about this. We do have a program where we could fit you for. Um, so we do have our Thailand volunteering program, which is actually. A little bit different um, from what Ashley Rose was on, but we're, we'll have a chat about that still as well. Um, if you already have a 120 hour TEF certificate, is the price of an internship program the same? So get in touch with us um, again. So it kind of can depend um, if you are with us qualified, etc. So we just want to double check that it is a qualification that is accepted by our partners, etc. So get in touch um, about that again as well. And how do you curb the fear of leaving a stable job for a career in TEFL? So I kind of want to ask Kate this question. How did you kind of find your, um, I suppose, the, the courage to just jump into it and travel abroad? Obviously, you jumped into a new career, Kate. So what were you, what were you, what would you say to it? How do you curb the fear? So is it me or Kate? Kate, Kate. sorry, you, yeah. Um... Um, I never really had too much of a fear, to be honest. I was just so excited. Um, I mean, I guess in the weeks like 
coming up to actually leaving because I was going on my own I did start to get a little bit nervous about things like oh what if I I don't know what if I don't like it or what if I make no friends and stuff but at the end of the day they're always just like irrational fears everyone makes friends everyone is fine after a while everything works out um so I'd say if you have any sort of a temptation just go for it because the worst that happens is you just go home and at least you can say you tried like so you're not if you hate it you're not bound to stay and um, you just have to give your company notice and that's the worst that can happen but like I doubt many people ever do that because most people end up having the most wonderful life-changing experience so I'd say just just go for it and just kind of commit yourself to it start telling people you want to do it and then that way you're kind of like okay this is becoming a bit more real um but yeah just go for it I think if you if you have that temptation you're kind of saying build your support system even from your home front as well so like people get excited for you is basically what you're saying is it yeah absolutely and you know if you I, I find for myself anyway if I tell people I'm doing something I'm kind of more like encouraged to do it because then I'm like okay well I kind of not that I have to do it then but I sort of you know started to tr trace out that path for myself um but yeah definitely have a support system wherever you go that's really important very good perfect um I so can if, if I can actually just yeah. jump in there really yeah. quickly I can completely relate to that question um I had myself and my partner had that fear before we left Ireland you know like Sean was a manager in an accounting firm and I had a primary school job set to go for the following year again um and we were both really nervous all of our friends back home are very career driven and and they're starting to buy houses and we were like oh what are we doing you know we're, we're settling for very for way less pay for you know is it worth it but like Kate said it's it's absolutely you know it's it's a life-changing experience um and if you don't like it like that you can always go back home but I can assure you that you're going to learn something and that's something that experience will stand to you in whatever you do in life. Um, and there's always job opportunities. People retire every day. People change careers themselves. So like I, I feel like when you're in your own country, it seems so small and so like, you know, dangerous to kind of step outside your comfort zone. But I mean, like that, if you just try it, you know, what's the worst that can happen if you don't like it? You have your support system to come home to you know so sorry I just that that kind of related no, that resonated with me at the last very good no and thank you for jumping in on that as well actually to get um never heard to have a little bit more info on that again um so I know we are actually at the time so I just want to fly through the last two questions that are there still so there's one actually for Katie there um just about if you were able to set your preference if you wanted to go public or I can't I can, sorry I can't actually pronounce it uh private school <laughs> I go on yeah yeah, everyone, thank you. Um, was it, were you able to set the preference or was it, because obviously you said it's easier to go this way, but... Um, it's far, far easier to do Hagwon. Absolutely, 100%, far easier because technically what Hagwon is, is a private company is hiring you to teach English. Um, with the public school, technically the public school is done through a thing called EPIK, e which is the English program in Korea. And you have to interview for EPIC. Now, the coordinators and TEFL and everybody helps you prep for the interview and everything else like that. But EPIC has very particular requirements. They have particular things they want from you. You do have to submit a template of a lesson plan. And a tip for anybody who is planning to do EPIC, again, with EPIC, you don't get a choice in location. You also don't get a choice in uh, the level you teach. Gear your lesson plan towards the level you would like to teach. This is the template lesson plan that you submit as part of your interview package. Now, I, like I said, I don't do EPIC. I have friends have done EPIC, so I kind of just pop, poke their brains about like the way it works. Um, and basically, during the interview process, you might be asked to teach for like part of your lesson plan for a few minutes so what happens then is if you make it through all the interviews and you get here and all the rest of it when they are placing you the chances are they will likely go back to your application to see what levels you were kind of gearing your lesson planning towards um but with the pub with the publics that's with the public schools but with the private schools it is very much a case of just having the TEFL having the requirements to get the visa and putting your best foot forward when you're doing the interviews really get engaged with it 
I am from Cork. I speak super fast. I have slowed down a ton. I'm probably still too fast, but just talk like you're talking to two-year-olds. Even when you're speaking to the older people and the adults in your interviews, just talk like you're talking to two-year-olds and just make sure that your alliteration and your pronunciation is great because that was the only fee I went for one interview and it was totally fine um and then the second interview the feedback was that they couldn't understand me at all and then the I got the third and fourth interviews then were the two op- job options that I got and the first one too so I got the three they were kind of the three of them but because it was Busan it was like, yeah. <laughs> very good very good and I see thank you Kate as well actually I've seen that you responded to the question as well that yes you can set your preference for a private versus public with you as well which is thank you for that um so the last and final question and obviously then I'm going to give the little coupon code and say thank you to everyone so that this last one is still for Shannon for Vietnam with relation to finding accommodation was that any hassle was it easy enough was it straightforward how did that go it was ridiculously easy. So obviously we were really worried about that because we don't speak Vietnamese. It's different currency. Um, and in Korea, we were given an apartment from our school, so we didn't have to worry about accommodation. But in Vietnam, it was completely up to us. And within three days, we had been put in touch with realtors. We had seen apartments and we had signed a lease and moved in Perfect. three days. So um, it happens super fast. There's a million options. Um, the, the partners were able to help us with looking for accommodation. Our school gave us a realtor's information. And we actually found our apartment by just walking into an apartment building and asking, do you have any apartments? And they were like, oh yeah, here's the manager. And we texted her. She set us up with a bunch of viewings for the next day. Um, the biggest thing is the deposit money. Um, they will ask you for two months deposit, one month rent, which is ridiculous. It's so much, but you don't have to do that. You can ask to split it up because that really freaked us out at first. We were like, we don't have that much cash on us. You know, we just spent all this money moving over here, um, but we were able to split that up. No problem. And then we just pay our landlord directly every month. And it's no, no problem at all. We have a beautiful two bedroom apartment in an amazing building. We love it. So it's super easy. Would not worry about it at all. That's perfect. Thank you ever so much. Um, so thank you to everyone, by the way, everyone for all four of you for taking your time out and explaining some bit about the program that you've done with us and stuff and give your experiences. We really, really appreciate it. This is exactly what everyone wants to find out, which is also why I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, and last but not least, obviously, like I explained, so we do have requirements for our programs, um, which is something that are set by our partners. So it's something that is just easiest to have a conversation about. So anyone that has been here today, if you're interested, um, get in touch with us. Um, you can contact on the live chat if you want. You can request a callback directly on the website. We are happy to help. Um, but obviously for the ones that are meeting the requirements and are interested in setting up um, or booking on, you can actually take 100 euros off by using the coupon code ASIA100 in the checkout. So my colleagues just put it in the chat there for me as well, which is ideal. So like I said, don't be, don't be, don't be shy, get in touch with us. We are happy to talk you through the programs as well. Um, thank you again to the four of you. This will, like I said, this, pro, this webinar is recorded, so it will be going on to YouTube as well for future reference. Um, and yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Annalise, for having us. Yeah, no thank problem. you so much. And good luck Bye. to everyone. Best of luck, everyone. Yeah, and like from doing this last year, just for anyone out there, I answer questions on Instagram all the time. The amount of people who come at us on Inst like from last year, even that like send me messages to like Tefl sent me the link to the video. You were the South Korea person last year. Can I ask you questions? And it goes on for like three days. So that's no problem. It's it's very simple. It's Irish Katie in Korea. All one word. You'll find me there. If you have any Perfect. questions, for free, I'm happy to answer the questions. You might be regretting that decision, Katie. I'll be on to you straight away. Year, yeah. I'm no You're after selling it to me now. <laughs> Honest to God, I get about two people every month through Tefl that sent me a sent me a message asking me questions about it. So I have zero. Like I said, 
I'm never leaving. So if anyone <laughs> wants to come here and visit me, I'm here. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Have a lovely rest of your evenings for mostly is late in the evening now. So thank you again and we'll be in touch. Bye bye, Slan. Bye.